Someone has taken one of the deadliest species in the galaxy and put a smile on its face. Here's your look at the upcoming release, NECA Toys New York Comic Con 2019 exclusive, Batman vs. Aliens. This action figure 2-pack is inspired by a classic comic book mashup in the 1997 Batman Aliens comic book miniseries, co-published by DC Comics and Dark Horse Comics. In it, Batman faces strange new aliens produced using DNA of some of Arkham Asylum's deadliest inmates. The set includes two brand new comic book based figures, both with over 30 points of articulation. Batman features a fabric cape, and the Joker alien has a bendable tail. First thing I'm going to do is get the measurements going for both the Batman and the Joker alien. I also want to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys for making this review possible and allowing me the opportunity to showcase these early for you. These will be exclusive to New York Comic Con 2019 for this year. So if you're interested in picking those up, picking this setup for yourself, you can find them at New York Comic Con 2019. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, the readout on my trusty tape measure, Batman stands 7.6 inches in height. And that, my friends, works out to be just short of 20 centimeters in height, 19.4 to be exact. We're going to switch that back over to inches, and we're going to measure off to the very top of Joker Alien. Just a stunning sight, the idea of you would have... Uh, alien depicted as the Joker, or really, we'll talk about that in a second. For the alien itself, granted, yes, you could have had it straighter standing, but most figures will likely, when it comes to aliens, you probably want to bend their knees. So I'm going to keep it in this pose and tell you then that the figure stands 9.3 inches in height, considerably taller than the Cape Crusader. We're going to switch that to centimeters as well, and you're looking at it almost being 24 centimeters. 23.8 to be exact. The only accessories that this exclusive comes with really is accessories for Batman. That clear stand, by the way, didn't come included with the set. I'm just using it so that the figure can stand appropriately. The ankles, and generally when it comes to these alien figures, like the ankles are a little bit more unstable, especially the way that you are displaying the legs. So I just used a clear display stand for my aid. Uh, as for the accessories, like I said, the only thing that comes included with the set is a gripping hand for Batman. As it currently stands, the figure comes with closed-fisted hands as the defaulted when you get it out of the packaging. Now granted, yes, if you wanted to display it with the other accessory, that being this neat-looking Batarang, then most definitely you would be wanting to make use of this hand here. I'll show you that in a second as well. As for the Batarang, a very simplified version of Batman's trusty gadget. You can see it's using a smaller uh, style of Bat logo. I do like the fact that they've made the edges almost look as if they are sharp. I can assure you though, they are not sharp. They're made of plastic. And then you can go ahead and just attach the Batarang either way you wish. I'd likely probably display it this way and it fits very snugly into Batman's hand. In fact, you could do the Dairy Queen Blizzard test. It doesn't seem like the Batarang will be going anywhere, and uh, it stays in place rather nicely. If you want to display this, of course, in Batman's hand, finding the appropriate hand, and thumbsies go in, so we're going to go ahead and pop the hand out of the socket, which just involves a little bit of twisting and turning as you're pulling it. It's probably the easiest way to do this if you simply are just gonna pull it out. You run the risk of breaking the peg. So a little bit of wiggle here and there might assist you with that. Twisting it back into place, almost as if you were returning it back to its home. There's Batman with the Batarang in hand. Nice little trusty gadget you can display Batman with. 
He doesn't come with anything else, and I don't really think he necessarily needs anything else, in all honesty. He could have come with his grapple gun and whatnot, but I think for displaying him, it's such a great-looking Batman figure, I'm fine just to display him with the Batarang. A couple of size comparisons. We'll move Joker. Don't worry, he's not going anywhere. Joker Alien will be moved to the side just for one second. And of course, we can do ourselves some comparisons in sizes. Now, we've recently just looked at the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive of Superman. We can bring Superman in and put him right down there. I'm using Superman as the comparison just for the time being because they are the exact carbon copy mold to one another, which I think is perfectly fine. If the mold works, stick with what works. Speaking of also molds, um, the other SDCC exclusive was, of course, the Batman. This was the Batman that came included with the Predator. Just get his thigh guards to be staying in place. And there are the three figures that we've gotten ourselves so far. FYI, actually, as well, the New York Comic Con exclusive. There will also be a Predator and also a Green Lantern. I'd love to get my hands on that one as well. And I would very much imagine that they would be using the exact same mold to one another also. Again, I really like the mold that they've opted to go with. I mean, even if you look at them side by side, it doesn't seem like there's any real difference between the molds, between both figures, other than, and of course, a few swappings out the utility belt on Batman to Superman's conventional yellow belt on the other side, and of course, a change of boots and stuff like that. But other than that, it's pretty much the exact same mold. I will hopefully hold out hope that somehow licensing permits itself and NECA Toys will give us more additional members of the league as it stands right now. If you really count the Green Lantern and Predator setup, we've now gotten ourselves three members of the league, Superman, Batman, and Green Lantern. Somehow, if they can work their magic as NECA tends to always do to give us uh, maybe Flash and Wonder Woman, I'm a very, very happy, happy man. But there's the two figures, the closest identical in brothers for their molds. And then again, for a comparison on the left and right, I just left the dome off of Batman just to kind of give you an idea, though, of the two figures. Now, keeping in mind, though, the armor on this guy can actually come off. You can remove this from himself. Just attach it like so. Take the front half off and take also the back half off. There we go. And once you have that removed, it is pretty much, again, the same mold. The cape is actually very identical to one another in color and fabric, but they are similar, very much similar mold brothers to one another. So we'll move him out of the way, because again, we've already looked at him extensively. If by all means, you guys have not seen the review of him, go check it out. We're gonna go ahead and take the battering out of his hand, though I promised it wasn't gonna be going anywhere, just in case I accidentally snag clip it or knock it. I certainly don't want that lost and left on the floor. Having a look at this Batman, I adore this sculpt. There's something magical about these new NECA uh, DC figures. And again, while it's probably going to be a limited run and what they can certainly manage to get out in con exclusives might be the workaround for how they're able to get these guys released. But it goes to show, it makes you often then sit and wonder what could have been what could have been if a company like NECA could have actually helmed a property like DC? The interesting thing about this Batman, though, and while this is an inspired look of Batman, this is not the actual look that he has in the comic in Batman vs. Alien 2, in which the Joker alien makes an appearance, as well as some other DNA sliced, spliced Arkham Asylum inmates and xenomorphs create these horrific entities uh, Batman actually doesn't look like this. Instead, he's actually a little bit more armored up. He's got a more distinct navy blue cowl, and it looks like he's almost got like a different armored helmet. This is an inspiration, of course, and I have to admit, I'm loving the mold design of this. This would take me back, uh, make a short story long, apologies for this, Back in the 90s when I would have been collecting comics, there's, of course, the traditional comic artist that you would expect to find, a Norm Brayfogle. Norm Brayfogle, for example, being one of my all-time favorite Batman comic artists. And then every once in a while, they would bring a new artist in, giving you a new interpretation of Batman. And immediately when you see a cover with a Batman looking like this, it would blow your mind. 
this would be this looks like a Batman that you would have seen a different artist, normally not one drawing for Batman, step up, step up, step up to the plate and draw the Cape Crusader in a very unique, almost gothic-like way. The elongated ears and the exaggerated eyes is really what draws me to this particular mold. I'm loving the design of it. It's still traditional Batman, yes, but it's definitely a different take on what we would normally expect to see with Batman. The sunken in, darkened eyes is not, of course, something you would normally obviously expect to see with Batman, but what you normally would not expect to find is this kind of M shape that's right above his brow, his, his brow right at the top here. It's very angular, and maybe it lends itself a little bit more to looking like a goth version of Batman, something like a gothic trade paperback or a gothic run of Batman, where it's very much distinctly different than, like I said, the other Batmans that we're used to seeing. So that, and that alone, really makes this guy stand out. Similar enough to the way that the Man of Steel also stood out. It looks very different than what you would normally expect from Superman. But again, like, there's something, there's something really quite splendid about both of these head sculpts they're enough that you know exactly who the character is but again it's their it's NECA's own spin on both the characters that I'm enjoying so much coloring on both the figures even though we're not going to focus our attention too much on Superman having already looked at him the coloring is actually quite good on Batman. I like the choice of blue that they also went with them. It's not a standard primary blue instead it's a very much a gray based blue the flesh tone and maybe even like the exaggerated jawline is something that's drawing my attention also to this. Superman happened to have the exact same thing going for him as well. It's a figure that looks good from all angles. Sideways, and you probably keep noticing this reviewer keeps turning the head. I mean, I'm just admiring how good it looks from different angles. As for the cape, it's very much the same idea of what we have gotten with the armored Batman. The one that came included with uh, Predator, for example, it's still got the pointed tips to it. But if you look at the figure, and I'll just kind of hold him up by his shoulders, you can see where his feet end and his cape continues. A long train cape that I really do like. It's The material is very much elasticized, similar, of course, to the one that we got with Armored Batman. It kind of feels like it could be almost like a parachute material, but it's got a soft feel to it. You can even see how it's been woven. It's a really nice fabric that they end up going with. It's smooth to the touch. It kind of feels like it could be like, uh, possibly like a satin. But like I said, it's got some elasticity to it as well. When we spin the figure around, we've got traditional gray and blue Batman working here, loving also the traditional uh, utility belt that they went with. Not large squared pockets, instead more like capsule sized compartments where Batman would only really likely have gas pellets and things like this. You would never probably find be him to be able to hold things like like gas guns and grapple guns. This is something of course smaller uh, smaller little containments like this, little small compartments, would only hold really like gas pellets and maybe Maybe even if there's a way that he could have folded up one of the batarangs and tucked that also into place. Love the gold that they've also put into this. You've got this mustard yellow being most, if not all, the coloring of the utility belt. And then they've accented it on the actual capsules in this exquisite metallic gold. And metallic gold also runs around the buckle section there as well. Paint-wise, there's not a lot of additional paint. You can kind of see little fragments of it around areas like the bicep, or really areas around the muscle get afforded a second coat of like a darker gray. Some of it also makes its way also to the legs. You can kind of see a little bit more of this happening up at the top here, and really around the very muscular legs that they've sculpted for Batman. Down to his boots. A nice sight to see is that they've actually incorporated foot articulation, which also aids for displaying the figure in a little bit more of a unique pose. And then, of course, he's got the traditional angular Batman boots. Let's have a look at this guy's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down quite a bit, actually. Makes me think that there's a ball joint working here, and there's a ball joint working up here, giving you a fair bit of articulation. You could even have like a very brooding Batman. Oh, I love the look of that. 
And you can even dra just drape the cape around and display it at the top of your shelf. How exquisite would that look? Just move the cape out of the way here. Now it's stuck. We can move his arms out it's quite freely, actually. You can rotate these all the way around. And he also has a swivel in the bicep as well. In addition to that, he has a double hinge on the elbow. There's not too much that you can actually move at the elbow because his bicep is so large. It's very much a difficult feat to get a double hinge fully working, but you still get enough that Batman could use an elbow just an uppercut there to the alien Joker, which we, again, we will be looking at in a second. Uh, he has no swivel, what seems to be in the glove. However, you can rotate the hands all the way around and you can also hinge them back and forth. This Batman also has an ab crunch. He additionally has a waist swivel. I really was surprised to see a waist swivel for the way his utility belt was, but they still managed to get that in there. The legs work on a pin and hinge socket from the looks of it. As you can see, the way it's been attached allows the legs to move forward, allows the legs to move back, and also hinges them out. You can see the hinges happening right there. He has a double hinge on the knee, gets much more of a bend than he could in the arm. Uh, he does not seem to have a swivel in his boot, a hinge up and down on his foot, an ankle rocker quite generously back and forth. And he also has the already mentioned toe articulation. By the way, this Batman also gets himself uh, a ball joint, uh, or I should say a peg hole on the underside of his foot. So if you do happen to have yourself maybe one, maybe two, maybe several of the clear NECA display stands, most definitely you can use that for displaying Batman. So that is that figure. I spent a fair bit of time talking about that one. I think well-deserving, really, when you break down how good that figure is. It's kind of, again, sad that NECA can't run with a, a DC line. Uh, relegated, sadly, it seems right now as convention exclusives. Hopefully, that's going to be something that will change. Then we can have a look at this exquisite monstrosity. And this is the alien... Uh, Alien DNA spliced Joker, or should I say Joker spliced Xenomorph. In the story, they actually take DNA from various inmates of Arkham Asylum, and they splice that with Xenomorphs. How that works, I don't really know, but what the end result is, is that you get yourself a Joker-fied alien. Now really, he doesn't have necessarily abilities. So you would really think splicing DNA with an alien, you probably would still end up getting a regular alien. Anyways, that's not that's not neither here nor there. This is, a, like I said, an exquisite rendition, an inspired rendition of the Joker alien from the comics, which actually, from what I remember, the dome of the alien wasn't as profoundly green as what we're getting right here. But again, I kind of like that NECA tweaked that a little bit more, turning up the volume, if you will, on Joker, at least the Joker properties. And if you look at the figure, we'll put him down here for a second. Thank goodness the tail comes in handy. And we'll just kind of move Batman out of the way just for a split second. Believe you me, he's not gonna be going very far. We can also bring in the alien that happened to come with Superman. Now, looking at the two, it does seem like they are carbon copies to one another. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. The coloring has obviously been drastically changed, but it does seem like they are using the same mold, which I think, looking at the two molds, they are likely using the Resurrection Alien mold, which I don't think actually has come out yet. So it might be something as a future mold that NECA is planning on using. But yeah, the aliens, if you look at them side by side, the tops of their domes, you spin around the backs of the figures, they do seem identical to one another. Of course, with a swap of paint. I really quite liked this one. And remember even mentioning in the video that I like the iridescent coloring. Iridescence basically means that when you look at it from different lights, different directions of light, it seems like the color does change. And it seemed that be the case with this alien here. It sometimes looks like it's a dark black and then you tilt it slightly, you can start seeing a little bit of that purple happening here. NECA took those skill sets for painting and elevated to like warp factor seven to give us this really neat rendition of Joker's skull, or at least his hair done on the dome of the Xenomorph. I like how it's dark on the sides. 
it's dark on either side, and how it kind of sort, sort of bleeds its way into the center section, almost as if it's a virus itself. You can almost even imagine that Joker's DNA is kind of taking over, consuming the alien. And of course, one of the big noticeable factors of this being a Joker alien is the fact that it's got the lips done in a bright ruby red. The lips also get a bit onto the teeth there as well. And even like the inner jaw, which is a little bit harder to kind of get in there and pull out, it's also been done there in a very blood-soaked red as well. Some little extra nods that I quite like about this particular figure, above and beyond the fact that it's all bleached white, uh, is the fact that the nails, if you look at the claws, all the claws have green nails. Even like the toes have additional green that's been added to the little claws. The talons, would you call those talons? And then even like the tail has additional red added to it. They found a way to still keep it very much an alien and very much still the Clown Prince of Crime, gets his little signatures signing off on this guy as well. The looks to be, uh, from first glance here when I got this out of the packaging, it looks very much like they took just white paint and covered over the surface section, which is basically what they've done. Uh, what I think works well though, is it doesn't, f it doesn't cover everything. So things like the rib cage, even like areas around the neck, by painting just the surface, if that de describing it like that, all the sections in the black, the more recessed areas are really ones that result then in popping. All of that pops out because they've only really again painted the surface. The paint is almost in like a, it's got a bit of a sheen to it. If you tilt it up, it kind of, you can see how the light just reflects off of it. I'm glad they didn't go with a matte uh, white on this. This works much, much better by using a shinier white pla uh, white paint, I should say, over top of the plastic. So really all around a nice looking figure. Uh, the draw for this set, honestly speaking, was Batman, but the icing on this cake is the fact that we get ourselves a Joker-inspired figure, which looking online, I've seen many people mimic this idea of taking a basic alien figure and painting over it in the white and giving it the green dome and stuff like that. NECA finally gave us a real service to that original Batman uh, alien comic by giving us like a representation of this in plastic. Let's have a look at this guy's posability. It's posability. Its head rotates back and forth. Now, one of the things about it I've noticed, as you rotate the head, it's naturally, it seems like it just wants to pop off. You just gotta be a little careful. Thank goodness it's only on a ball joint, but I did notice when I am rotating the head back and forth, periodically the ball joint, the head does pop off the ball joint. And again, it's just a simple fix of putting that back onto the socket. You can hinge the head up and down. There is a hinge joint right there. And actually, if I can just take the head off again, once again, you can see there's a ball joint and there's the hinge joint, which just is a little, a little on the stiffer side, probably a little bit of paint that's been added to the grooves there accidentally. Uh, so that does rotate back and forth, like I said, up and down. And if you can eventually get that worked, that little hinge joint worked and uh, just broken in a little bit, you would be able to move that head a lot more further down and a lot more further up. The mouth opens and closes. You can also get in there. If you can get in there with probably a pair of tweezers, you would be able to pull out the inner jaw. Just a little difficult myself to get that out of there, but that would also be something that would open and close. The upper torso has a ball joint. The shoulders hinge outward like so. Uh, one thing I do like is that the way, because it's been painted the way it is, all the joints have remained relatively tight on this figure. Things like uh, the arms, the elbows, for example, have a double hinge on the, on the joint. The hands rotate all the way around. They also hinge back and forth. The legs move out like that. They move forward, they move back, has a double hinge on the knee, one there and one there, giving you a double hinge happening on the knee. And then he does have a hinge on the hind leg, the back section of his leg, with an additional hinge happening in the foot and even toe articulation as well. If you've managed to collect any of these alien figures, sometimes problematic can be the fact that just the way that their legs are, uh, they do, they are a little on the hard to stand side. 
One thing that can certainly come to your aid is the fact with the tail being a wire frame, what I simply just did was I bent the, t the tail, brought it down, and then I bent it like this. Just bent it, kind of leveled off to the, the heel of the feet. And this allows a little bit of additional stability for displaying the figure. And then again, we can bring in Batman. Certainly could not forget about Batman. I, again, love this set. We were hinted and teased initially with the Armored Batman and uh, Predator set, as well as the Superman and Alien set, a while ago as something that was going to be an upcoming exclusive. We also got teased this set as well. And I was really excited that, first and foremost, uh, NECA Toys was going to be handling a DC property. Maybe not certainly as something that's a retail circulated release, but at the very least is something that fans of both DC and certainly fans of NECA Toys could eventually pick up if you were able to attend the Comic Cons. Now the other ones were of course for SDCC and this set, this glorious set, is an exclusive to the New York Comic Con 2019. NECA Toys wowed fans over with their SDCC 2019 exclusives of Superman vs. Aliens and Batman vs. Predator respectively. The very idea that NECA Toys was even able to handle DC figures was something mind-blowing, but ended up translating to some pretty impressive looking figures. To this day, that Superman is still one of my favorites in my collection. So how do you top that? How do you top what they did so well for SDCC 2019? Well, for New York Comic Con for 2019 this year, coming up in October, they're releasing the Cape Crusader battling one of his deadliest nemesis, his DNA at least, in the body of one of the deadliest creatures in the known galaxy. This set is pretty impressive, I have to admit. Granted, the alien is a mold that we have gotten before. In fact, we did get it before with the SDCC 2019 exclusive that came with Superman, but still giving it a bleached white coat of paint and all the Joker's calling cues like the green hair translated to a green dome and his big red smile translated to blood-soaked lips end up making this alien a standout from maybe some of the other xenomorphs that you might have in your collection. Now let's of course talk about Batman. For me, this is the reasoning for wanting to get this set. Don't not, Nothing against necessarily the Joker alien, but the idea that we're getting Batman done by NECA toys. Let that soak in for a second. The end result is a, super, a Batman that looks really good. I mean, really good. It's a Batman that would look like something that would normally be like a one-of cover. Normally, if you would have been collecting comics, let's say in the 80s and 90s, every once in a while, there was an artist that stepped up to the plate and gave us a different interpretation of a Batman. This is a Batman I would almost even imagine on the comic cover of a, like a gothic mini-series. The very elongated ears, the sharp-edged eyebrows, and really the more angular-looking cowl really works well for this particular Batman. It's a Batman that looks good from all angles. Believe you me, I spent probably about 10-15 minutes just like looking at the figure from different angles, and I'm loving the end result. It's a shame, really, that when it's all said and done, NECA Toys, unfortunately, can only really do these as SDCCs uh, for the current time being. Comic-Cons and other convention exclusives are sort of their way to get their foot in the door when it comes to handling properties that might be handled by, others, by other companies, other manufacturers. But if you're able to pick up these pieces for yourself, I have to say they are, they are probably one of the best figures. This is probably one of the best Batman figures I have in my current collection. Same as this Superman. It's one of the best Superman I have in my collection as well. Like I said, this was an early sneak peek. So again, I want to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys. As I said, this one is going to be an SD, well, not SDCC. It's going to be a New York Comic Con 2000 exclusive. And New York Comic Con starts Thursday, October 3rd. And it's going to run all the way to Sunday, October 6th. Many of the companies, the online sites that have this guy pre-ordered, this set pre-ordered, has already sold out. So the chances of getting this set might be a little harder right now, unless you're able to attend the New York Comic Con this year and pick up a set for yourself. I think the price point for this is probably going to be about $45. That's based on what I'm seeing for many online sites. Seem to have had the pre-order sitting at around there. As you certainly know, with many of the Comic-Con exclusives, specifically NECAs, as soon as they sell out, the prices of them will always skyrocket. So you, if you do get a chance to pick this one up for yourself, grab it immediately. Or maybe if you have a friend that maybe owes you and they're going to the Comic-Con, maybe have them pick it up for you while they're there. 
Either way though, guys, let me know what you guys think of this upcoming set release. Are you as wowed for the Batman as I am? What a neat looking figure. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Batman vs. Alien New York Comic Con 2019 exclusive. I always like reading your comments down below. And speaking of also down below, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel or a long time viewer and just maybe never got around to it and swing on over not only to the New York Comic Con but also to that bell notification and turn that on so that when future videos are coming onto this channel you'll never miss out. As always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.